Hello, hello, and welcome to Breath of the Wild 2, Breath of the Wilder. This is the Lo Five Podcast with Alex and Luke. How you doing, boss? What up, what up? You ready to talk about some Breath of the Wild DLC, bruh? Yeah, dude. Uh, Tears of the <laughs> Kingdom, which definitely sounds like a early 2000s like emo punk band album, or at least lead song, like... I can see this being like some emo bands like Tears of the Kingdom. It's really like <laughs> a Fall Out Boy song or something. But yeah, Breath of the Wild or Most Wild. Uh, you know, Hyrule Gone Wild. How do you how do you feel about doing a pod on the biggest game of the year? Psych. Oh man. Psych. What are we'll you psyching about? <laughs> we'll start, baby. We'll oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> man, I feel good, dude. You know we had to jump into the zeitgeist for the Tears of the Kingdom drop. And there I've been playing. I've been playing. Yeah, it's a weird it's a weird podcast to do. This game is ADHD simulator and uh, mm-hmm. we it is. <laughs> we are not known to be the most structured podcast as it is, so I was thinking about like how this is going to go and I'm like do I just bounce all over the place and get lost and then frustrated and then jump back to something else like I do whenst playing <laughs> Tears of the Kingdom, but uh we'll try to keep it on the rails. Uh I would have loved to have done a pod every four times I play the game. Because oh, I have all I, these I new thoughts and feelings, so um, don't expect any larger plot points to be covered today. Uh, now, is that purely because you don't have any larger plot points? Because I can make, I can, I can throw out some spoilers, bro. <laughs> dog, I think I have three sections of the base layer of the map uncovered because I've been so. Wow. Yeah, we'll get it. We'll get into the weird like, and it's not like I haven't played. No, for sure. Um, what are your hours? Where, where are we clocking in right now? Uh, should have checked right before, but I'm somewhere in that 40 to 50 range. Yes. I'm about five ahead of you. I've been watching <laughs> leading up to yeah. the bottom. Huh? I'm like, I'm wondering. You've been, <laughs> usually it's, it's rare that you got, unless it's like some crap little indie game that only you play. Usually I have more hours <laughs> than you. But, Dude, uh, my guy. It's because, it's because my wife <laughs> loves it so much. She like finds it soothing. So at night, instead of listening to a sleep story or some shit like that, she asked me to play yeah. Zelda. Nice and, dude, of course I'm going to be like, sure. <laughs> Even when I'm tired, dude, because like, like I'm like, fuck, I'll play Zelda. And then like, she falls design. asleep and I like end up staying up all night playing Zelda. <laughs> sure. The sound design is cute as shit, so I'll give her that. Most of it's the same from Breath of the Wild, mm. but it's, 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 it's polished. It's charming, like it's, though. It's, yeah. it's incredibly cute, so I can definitely see how just you derping around babies they will watch me play sometimes and they're mildly interested i appreciate that yeah so i've been getting it in best i can but i you know surprisingly enough i have played a tiny bit of other games and we'll get to that later on because it is all engrossing and it's it's been fun to get into the water cooler game stop with the noises (laughs) you can you can hear me trying to lick my time bro the fuck (laughs) not i needed to know it's 60 hours could you hold on i'm gonna play some tears of the kingdom while you do your thing okay sure (laughs) here's my thoughts on (laughs) no uh but yeah man it's just like it's fun when you jump on your Switch and you see everybody playing the same game. Or oh, at least you three, four. Not it's kinda like it's kinda like Animal Crossing. I mean not quite Dude, as intense, I, but I haven't seen my friends live pop off like this on Nintendo since Animal Crossing. Right. It's really cool to see. And then when you go to work, uh, I work with some buddies and we'll talk about different things that we're running into. But truly, I'm about can you check my hours while you're just fucking around on there? Being a kid. <laughs> Because, like, I've just scratched the surface. It's actually kind of, like, intensely intimidating just how much is in front of you in this game. It's, Dude, like, a it, little, it's it a little out of pocket. Bit. It's a little out of pocket <laughs> to the point where I play other games occasionally just because I'm, like, stressed out about how much is in front of me. You're at 45 hours or more. So you're probably, just tickling, you're probably tickling 50, which means sure. I'm about 10 more, which I'm about 10 more, maybe a little bit more plus than you. <laughs> Tickling 50 shouts out Aaron. All right, moving on. <laughs> that's a deep cut for the family. <laughs> oh, that's good. Uh, but anyway, you have to you have to do a pod and this won't be our last one on the game. I wonder if next month will even be far enough to like talk about Dude, like, I don't know. game stuff because when we were when we were discussing earlier like when we were throwing out the game for the next month cuz I do want to move on from Tears, but I know I'm not really going to move on from Tears. Right. But like I don't know. It could go on for a long time. 
you were one of those crazy people in Breath of the Wild where you never beat Ganon because you didn't want the game to end, so you didn't do the one thing you had been playing 100 plus hours to do. And mm-hmm. uh, it turned out that that was actually quite a common phenomenon. I got a buddy Howell at work who did the same thing. He, I think he literally beat Ganon so he could start playing this game. I've read multiple articles yeah. online about people who just won't fight Ganon, and I'm like, it's Zelda, man. <laughs> I did that shit. Right? It sets you right before the fight with Ganon, just like any other Zelda game. So, like, yep. Uh, I was talking to Nam at Brunson's. You remember Nam? She, uh, she did the same yeah. thing. She was like, I think I had to, I think I had to beat Ganon before I go on to, you know, pick it up and do two. I was like, oh no, shit, I did that shit too. Sure. But I did take down Ganon. I officially did beat Breath of the Wild a couple of years ago. But it was after giving it a rest, like a long rest. I picked it up just so I could like check the box, bro. And this one picks right up. Only it's like better, and like. Before we right, get to right, right, d- right. dude, it's like here's the deal. Let me say it. It's a sequel though. Like it's not really better. Like it's hard. Like you know when you're putting these on a scale, I just don't understand how we're supposed to be throwing numbers and shit. And that's why we don't really do numbers on this cast unless we feel like it, and then we do it, and then we scrap <laughs> yeah. them later on. That's not the point. The game right, right, right. is not better. It it's is more nine, better. It's a nine plus. It's bro. more better, but it's not a better game. I don't know if that means anything, but it means something to me that it's more yeah, better. Yeah, yeah. But it's not a better game. Dude. Uh, we're briefly in a rant about. So we did top ten games, and Alex did not put Breath of the Wild on his game because he's artistic and he's cool and he's edgy Man. and he likes clicks and he likes to stir up controversy. He puts <laughs> dumb shit like fucking Tetris on there. But moving forward, dude, that's like the um, safest thing I've done is call Tetris that high. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Tetris, so lame. But Breath of the Wild was my number one, and this is more more Breath of the Wild, Wild and Wet edition. But <laughs> dude, what do you you team Ocarina of Time or you team fucking Majora's Mask? I'm team OOT. See me too, and that's like similar reasons probably here for for Breath of the Wild, Tears of the Kingdom. No, <laughs> well, it <laughs> came out first, bro, dude. Majora's yeah, Mask. Like, Majora's Mask is it's really a totally cool. different game, and it and is dope. totally different. But the mechanic changes it but so the, much. But the only reason I think that you can say, well, there's many reasons, but like I just feel that like this game, it's hard to like put it right next to Breath of the Wild because Breath of the Wild, you know, had to fucking swim before this one could take off to space. <laughs> right. No, I mean, internet says that Breath of the Wild is like a tech demo. I don't and, think it's uh, that little though. Like I think like don't belittle it. It's almost like if I had to go back to one of these games, and I'm way yeah. too early to truly say this, but I would go back to Breath of the Wild because like this game is so intimidating that it's almost like a giant playground for those who loved Breath of the Wild. I can't imagine this right. being your first game before playing Breath of the Wild. Not to get into the real boring stuff, but the sound design. <laughs> but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. The sound design, the art. All the things that blew your mind were just so groundbreaking in the first one. You just can't really recapture that magic. Well, uh, there's a couple the moments plateau. in the beginning of this, dude. The depths, the depths made me feel something. <laughs> I, medium and frustration, sure. Oh, that's uh, dope, man. I didn't even like the, the sky shit. Fine. The sky shit, I'm, I think, is cool, but I barely even like. Aside from that fucking like money shot when you jump out of those towers, like I don't really care to go up and explore in the sky. I'm like, whatever. Oh, I tripping. played Skyward Sword. I played Skyward Sword. That oh. shit was dope. But the depths, man, the depths do something for me. I'm like, this is new shit. This is weird. We're gonna, we're gonna, debate. Here. We're gonna debate this later because I, I do have thoughts <laughs> on that. And uh, so this is when you dive into the depths and you're like, this is too much. I'm gonna shoot back up to the top. That's what yeah. we're doing. Now. We're shooting back up to the top here. <laughs> so like, I shouldn't have let you drive, man. <laughs> <laughs> the whole pod's gonna be this way. Breath of the Wild <laughs> is the coolest game ever. This game is sick, and I actually struggled in the beginning to get into this game because it wasn't breath of the wild. And I still thought it was cool, but I was comparing everything. You did a fresh replay of breath of the wild though. Didn't you? Yeah. Or at least a pretty I got, like, heavy probably got... 40, 50 hours in. I don't yeah, think I went dog. all the way through, but right on still when you leave the cave in breath of the wild and you're just on the plateau. Like the plateau is still mm-hmm. the greatest tutorial in all of games ever. Just the coolest. Whereas I think it's, better, I think it's Island, better than this one. Yeah. Sky Island too much. was, it was a little long. <laughs> It was a little less. It was more linear, which is strange, right? Like you had to get the right. shrines in order. There's and nothing like, linear about this game except for the tutorial. <laughs> yeah, which was really strange. It like took a while to get cooking, and I was getting kind of frustrated. But it was also super cool. So like, right. 
it's awesome. The more I've settled into it, the more fun it's been. It definitely recaptures that magic. Like we said, you go and you talk to your homies about it and you're having fun swapping stories and you're running into everything and you're doing things at your own pace or the lightly suggested guided pace of the game. Right. And it's brilliant. Um, it's definitely the game of the year unless Starfield delivers on a tenth of what they just promised at that like showcase. Oh <laughs> the game looks fucking litty. But like, <laughs> and that would only just be because this isn't, this isn't new. It's just a super, super bitchin' sequel, right? Yeah, but my, so my like, critiques with, with Tears of the Kingdom better. are that it's too tedious, man. There are certain things that are, and that's the thing with Starfield, and I don't know if I'm going to like Starfield because it's too much. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, we'll get into that later. So <laughs> what's new? I'm just kind of like, what I found really interesting while I played is like how the game really answers critiques or the things that people mm-hmm. debate argued about for years because it has been like five six years yeah it sounds about right so it's been like five six years since the game came out and like so first 2017 is breath of the wild yeah the number one set six years the number one intensely debated thing about the game forever was weapon that's when the switch was the zelda machine because it was the only game that (laughs) was worth playing aside from mario kart yeah so yeah and then you got to odyssey in the fall so hey man if we get odyssey this fall shadow drop that'd be Mm. fucking wild (laughs) but anyway Weapon durability. Yeah. Some people hated it. Some people loved it. I was always somewhere in between. Uh-huh. I'm a little bit more in favor of it in this game because of the new few. Mm. So we'll get into it the is different. Cool. We'll get into I the still different have abilities my gripes. from time to time. <laughs> yeah. So whatever nonsense table setting, you know, calamity or whatever they call it in this game uh, uh-huh. event has rotted most of the weapons, which is yeah. fine. So they're even more brittle, but. Uh, uh-huh, basically, you get, to, you get to attach <laughs> sticks to things now, <laughs> yep. or weapons to other weapons, <laughs> like monster pieces and stuff, and uh, yeah. or anything, pretty much anything. So, <laughs> fuse, yeah. So it's really cool though because another nice little thing they did is like now all your enemies have these little pieces, and you always took little monster parts. They would call it right. in the wild, but now in tears you have like they have like these little crowns almost and little horns and different like things where they will fuck you up with those by the way mm-hmm. uh, the amount of times i got one shotted by those little captain <laughs> horns in the beginning was so infuriating but then you attach those to your weapons so it's like they're just like hey you don't like weapon durability huh and then we're like yeah or like people who are mad about it are like yeah and they're like so we're gonna make them more brittle but mm-hmm. we're also gonna give you all the fun things to play with so like fuck you deal with it and i kind of <laughs> respect it like instead of just taking it away it's cool they just continued to like experiment and play with it. So you don't like it. Where are you on it? I don't uh, know. I do cool. like it. I think, but here's my, my only gripe is that you don't, I don't know, man. Like I, so there's something nice about a nice clean sword, right? And these like degraded swords or whatever, they're ugly. And then you add like weird items to it. It is dope. I just don't like the aesthetic all the time. I definitely will switch weapons when I'm just traversing. I will switch weapons so the really cool one is on my back. And then right. when I need to take out the ugly but very strong weapon to fight, I will. I'm that And petty, I like that so part about it. That. Yeah, and it's just yeah. like a weird aesthetics thing. I do think the functionality of it is really cool, man. Like I think, you know, yeah. these different items or whatever can add different flavor to it. Or you can use like the different orbs that will give it like frost ability. They have definitely taken some of like the special like the special items of Breath of the Wild and like made them more important in tears. And it made that like item system like it elevates it, man. I mean, it's cool. And I yeah. do like it. I just I'm, I'm just a silly boy and I'd rather run around with the master sword on my back <laughs> and I can now because I got that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit i don't have it yet uh no and it's cool because it it forces you like the durability in the first game was just so you wouldn't get attached to a weapon and you're always right. and i actually expect respected that because i've been playing games like this year i've been playing like skyrim mm-hmm. and uh witcher was especially guilty of this is i was going all around town getting all these swords and fancy names and stuff in the witcher but all i would do is sell them so i could go like <laughs> master craft my witcher gear and Yo. like you never have a reason to be using these different swords other than to sell them we got to hit economy. We got to derail you for economy real quick. You you fuck with any of those? You cheese anything in the game? You fuck with any of the glitches? No, not a bit. Not me. Not me neither, dude. Got to play it beer. Shame all you out there. Glitching <laughs> the diamonds. <laughs> I'm just I, think playing, dude. I think it's great that people are doing that shit but it's so funny that i made that decision though i was like no 
I'm going to keep my Zelda experience pure. <laughs> I thought it was funny that Nintendo patched it because I'm like, this is the... Fuck like, yeah, they patched just, it. They're, they're like, we work so hard on this game not to have weird glitches. They're like, fuck you guys. Six <laughs> years of YouTube industry have been made on like, well, like... They put like chests like in areas that forced you to glitch to get into them. <laughs> the game was like, shit. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, to fix my rant... Um, <laughs> So not only are you like forced to use all these different types of weapons, but right. now you're coming up with creative combinations. Uh, I think it's funny when you just put a spear on a spear. Or I thought it'd be it like makes it super like, long and shit. <laughs> ADHD mode. Um, you know the Kirby game on the N64 where you suck in yes, two sir. crystal shards, where you suck in two things. I'm like, <laughs> yep. I think about that all the time, and like sometimes <laughs> it works, and sometimes it really right. just doesn't. Like I was so butt hurt when I put like I had a I had a sturdy spear and I attached a bow to it, and I was like, what cool thing will this make? <laughs> it's a, it's a spear with a bow at the yeah. end of it. it the like, long way points. to the long way to I thought, like points. maybe a crossbow or something fucking cool, <laughs> but no, dude, it's just a bow and a spear. I don't know. Um, this game is silly like that. I, I enjoy its playfulness, man. It's like that the fuse and the master hand stuff doesn't entirely make sense, but yeah. in a weird way, it fits. They've made it seem natural, which is yeah. which is silly. Uh, you want to hit us with the A sounder? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Boing! Yeah, for some reason. He's just like, I attached a TNT barrel to my sword, and that worked yeah. about as well as you think it would. Uh, yeah, that shit was clouded. Or, uh, and I do like that about this game, man. And that like actually a mine makes cart it to a spear or a club. It's like on yeah. the mine cart on your shield is sick. Like the shield surfing is actually like even that is cooler. cool. The skateboarding and surfing and shit that you can do is, is yeah, dope. It's but it's it, it, it like so it makes your it like takes it wears on your shield and breaks it though. That shit bugs me. I'm like, come on, you I just want to ride. The most is, <laughs> we'll get into it later. But the super cool new caves, I fucking love them. Except for you have to smash all of your rock weapons to get down in there. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. you know what would be nice? Oh man, have you got weapon durability the... wasn't this petty, and I didn't have to like continue to cycle <laughs> out my weapons to get more rock hammers. It's not I've fun. Been, been there, dude. But have you done the second or? Uh, whatever have you done the dungeon in the fire uh place like the you know what i'm talking about as uh as i do both in the game and in this podcast we'll get to that later i'll stay on track dude i'm telling you if you go there it's gonna make that experience a little easier for you because one of the homies will follow you and he blows up those rocks oh right yeah that makes sense um no (laughs) when i was underneath the castle in hyrule uh i was going nuts dude but yo i like, spent a lot of time down there one night and that's just did man you just like all of a sudden you find yourself on some weird side mission you, like two hours later and you're like in the middle of some like if, the castle high rule and shit dude it's nuts <laughs> you'll also find yourself for an hour exploring an area of the depths only to find out that they're kind of walled off <laughs> from region to region so oh, you've been man. running in a circle for an hour yes. and you're pissed Mm-hmm. Uh, I kind of had right. that realization the other night and I was like, oh, fuck me. <laughs> so uh, I'm surprised, you know, next on my checklist of keeping Alex on track, uh, the tedium <laughs> of the game, you addressed that once. That was actually a critique of Breath of the Wild. So I'm surprised to hear you say that. Uh, I would say that things like Ascend, which is you shoot up, which uh, is pretty widely known at this point, was a developer tool that they decided right. was really cool and they worked it into the mechanics. Uh, I cool. love it. You just basically shoot through the ceiling and go to the top. Yeah, I mean, early on in the game, there was definitely dude. That animation is whack. (laughs) Takes so long, but it's also like I'm sure it's loading up like your Nintendo Switch is literally wheezing playing this game, and he's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, Alex. Uh, I'm trying my best, my lord." It is cool. (laughs) I'm just playing. (laughs) Yeah, no, and then the different. The goofy, the goofy bullshit that you can do with Ultra Hand and the dumb things you can craft mm-hmm. in the vehicles, which is like, you know, where they Minecraft the shit out of this game. But they don't give you very many steering wheels for like a really long time. So it's like, <laughs> do you want to just roll in a direction and hope that you yeah. don't a rock or a hill and you get your stupid <laughs> Korok friend? You want to try and you want to try and explain Zonai devices for the people that haven't played this game, bro? <sighs> Yeah, I suppose. Um, imagine you're playing any other crafting game after Minecraft came out, <laughs> and your Zonai is like the ancient race. There's a time split in this game, very Ocarina of Time ish, but uh, you know, right. not really a spoiler. But Zelda gets she's a what something of the say Oracle of yeah. Time or something. If you're or if you're a Zelda time. fan, can you really spoil Zelda, dude? It's the same fucking loop every game. <laughs> All right, touche. But yeah, no, she's back in time. <laughs> Oh man, I gotta tell this. So when you're you start off in the depths, like exploring some uh, 
cave with her or whatever, and then you run into some mural, and she's like, "Oh my god!" In her British accent, it drives me insane. <laughs> her voice acting, I, I dig it, dude, so but she's bad. so bad, it's so, so bad. bad. Uh, <laughs> like I just don't know why she has to be fucking British. Just make Zelda Japanese. Get over it. Uh, anyway, I'd be the weirdest shirt I'd wear. It just says "Make Zelda Japanese," but <laughs> we should put it in our merch mess. store. <laughs> right. I don't think we should actually. That's bad. Nintendo idea. would sue the shit out of you. Yeah. Like, do what I want. Hey, we um, might show up on, on like I don't know Kotaku or something. <laughs> <laughs> I got jokes, but I'm gonna leave it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, and then you know you saw it in the trailer but like ganon comes alive and my my babies are sitting in their little jumper things uh and they're chilling and they're not really like they don't really like sometimes the glow of the screen will draw them in for a little bit but they're right, like right. Oh, old dogs so they're just like goobing around staring around <laughs> but like arthur's watching for a second and at that moment when ganon like erupts or whatever and comes Man, back that's to- creepy <laughs> it's really loud and sudden and arthur had been watching he goes ah! and then starts crying <laughs> Oh man, you traumatized your boy. <laughs> <laughs> this will only be for Alex and I because he can see me on camera, but literally he's sitting there, he's like, ah. <laughs> and he just starts wailing and his mom picked him up and soothed him. And I was just dying, dude. I felt bad because it's my fault. But I'm like, I can now tell him the first thing that he got scared of and like truly cried about was for right. So they're mortal enemies now, which is dope. That is dope. Anyway, uh, your new Sky Island tutorial, which is the new plateau, right. you got some, some bird human hunk man. No, oh, he's kind of hot. Raru, the internet thinks he's hot. I'm not going to tell you. Yeah. yeah. He's all right. Yeah. He's fucking around. Uh, this, this isn't Hades. Um, we're, not, we're not in that Hades level horny of gaming this right now, but some people are, dude. Jesus, this is the worst podcast ever. Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> statistics on searches about Zelda. Looks like let me scroll up and see how many views this video's got. Found another one for me. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know how on Reddit, like you get the data accounts that are fucking sick. Yeah. They're like once a month Pornhub just is like, here you guys go. We collect all the data and here's the dumbest shit you fucking deviants are into. Zelda related searches are up like hundred percent or something ridiculous. And like they like categorize them. It's like Pura. Like Lincoln's oh, out, no. like, dumb as shit. And then like someone on uh someone on Reddit's like, why don't you add Raru, you cowards? And I, <laughs> that's what I basically I came up with that. Hey, fun fact, Raru is the name of the first village in, I believe, this is the well, one of the first Nest Zeldas. So it's it's a callback, man. It's kind of fun. Or anyway, the zone <laughs> vehicles that I've been trying to describe. Yeah. Uh, this dude from this ancient civilization is like helping you around your tutorial island, and uh, Zelda is back in time with that ancient founding of Hyrule. And the dude, he's not just a dude; he's like the spirit of the founding king of Hyrule, king, right? Which is a definite <laughs> ancestor of Zelda, um, who is definitely like hooking up with Zelda's great 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 grandma. There, uh, don't make that sound <laughs> dirty. This is- <laughs> It's love <laughs> while we're there though another wonderful meme i saw was like some people like love to argue whether or not link and zelda date oh or yeah whether or not they're in love and like someone's like <laughs> the top thing it says like they're just friends and then the comment below it, it's just like i hate to break this to you but uh link and zelda fuck until the room stinks <laughs> i was just like gross <laughs> <laughs> but anyway tedium in the game zone eye devices that's what i was going for <laughs> Yeah, what are those old devices again, bro? You got like a fan, you got like a rocket, you got these goofy yeah. things attached to goofy things, and they do What do you shit. know about that gumball machine that dispenses them Dude. to you? <laughs> I'm surprised it's not like in amiibo form, like Zelda, or not Zelda, but Nintendo. Dog. A toy company. Uh, I've, uh, run, I've run all my amiibos through this game. <laughs> oh, we're, we're not yeah. sorry to memes. We're just talking about the gumball zone eye device feeders right now. I'll forget to say it later, though. The best one is Epona. You get the actual legendary Epona. Pretty dope. Sick. Yeah. <laughs> so they're an ancient civilization. You build riggedy crafts and they sort of work. And the internet either enjoy watching those videos or feel like a fucking moron. When you're <laughs> when you're putting together a crappy wagon that goes one direction and breaks, and then someone else is putting together like literal torture chambers for like enemies and stuff. I definitely uh, you're the same way. Like I'm avoiding a lot of internet content, so the game is just like right, discoverable because that's like the true magic of these games is like discovery, right? Like I constantly mm-hmm. it's like a map game. Like I'm just gonna go to this area. What'll I stumble into? 
but the internet, dude, sometimes I just get sucked in and people make the funniest. I mean, it's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. oh, so that's a, that's a send. <laughs> dude, I don't want to know about a send. I want to know about the Zoni devices. <laughs> I know. But it started off from the bullet point of tedium. <laughs> Ascend. <laughs> but that's at. how this game is, man. You start trying to do any one thing. It doesn't even matter. It's worse than Skyrim. It's worse than The Witcher. Anything I try and do, there will be something that interrupts me, and I end up on a ridiculous side quest, side quest, side quest. <laughs> Dude. We're just trying to prove something to yourself. I saw it. Yeah, day. but it's fun. It's just like Tears of the Kingdom is a master class of pointlessness. <laughs> like, what, what did you just do for an hour? Like, I wanted to see if my device worked. So maybe I just did for a really long time. How many you die? Do you die more often in this game versus Breath of the Wild? Dude, it's getting better. But like the first twenty to thirty hours of this game is just like one of the dumbest ways that you can die. Mm-hmm. Uh, boy, did I test that. Uh, from the beginning, Tyler's his first death, he goes, I was trying to climb a tree to grab an apple and fell off the cliff. <laughs> so that was great. Dude, I was, I was jumping into the depths the other night. Yeah. Um, at a certain point that it's like a, it's more of a chasm or whatever, but I kept, it was a smaller hole. So every, I like, dude, chasm. I died like, <laughs> what's up? Did you just call it chasm a chasm? Ah, Chad, you know, whatever. Chad Cad. What's, what's the difference? Chasm. It's his fucking frat boy chasm. Frat boy hole. Chasm. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess it's more of a chasm than a chasm. That's not like but I was still movie. jumping in it. TV and I, I, dude, I kept in the chasm. I kept hitting the side of the wall. I did it like five times in a row. <laughs> I was like, oh man, then I would die each time. It was just whack. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, I, uh, my boss, or he's an assistant principal, he's not a really boss, but you get the point. Admin at my school, he forgot when a rainstorm, you have to take your metal off, and he kept getting just electrocuted, and he's like, what a so funny. fucking game. <laughs> and he put in like, well over 100 hours into Breath of the Wild. Like He knows right, right. He, he knows about the electricity. Mm. He's like, how <laughs> tedious is this game? Like I can't just keep dying and then figure yeah. it out. So just the dumb shit will kill you, man. Just the smallest of enemies were one shotting you from the longest time in the beginning. It was rough. I will say the Ultra Hand is dope and I've come to really love it, but it does make me like I'm I'm kind of sad that I haven't created anything like amazing. <laughs> you know what I mean? My coolest my coolest ve- vehicles like are dope, but it's really just like because they got like a few rockets and a few fans and as many batteries as I could find. <laughs> It uh, it's kind of wonky. Like it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. That was like the first five to ten hours. I was just pretty frustrated with like rotating things. But like, yeah, now this game. You see that it teaches you, and the shrines have been made way cooler. They yeah, are, the shrines are dope. Way cooler because you just have like the weirdest things to put together. And it's I really didn't, cool. I didn't love the like weird. I don't even remember what they call them in Breath of the Wild, but like this, the powers that essentially the Master Hand has taken over. You know, the different, like the bomb and like the stasis. magnesis and stasis yeah. and stuff. I, like, I didn't them. love that part of Breath of the Wild, to be honest. And uh-huh. It was like fine. And I, I think that this stuff works way better, but it's weirder. <laughs> uh, you know, I like that they mixed it up because it makes it feel like a new game. You have new physics, all those types of things. Right. right? So like, well, same physics, but new ways to fuck with them for a lack of a more eloquent explanation. So I'm here for it. It mixes up the formula enough where it's not just Breath of the Wild 2 wet and wilder. It's more of its own whole thing that they've built around, right? So, like, it's cool, but I missed them for a while, especially the bombs. Mm -hmm. Um, I miss having the bombs when I'm in the caves and I'm just trying to blow things up. Wish I had bombs. I'm telling you, man, you got to go talk to your homie at Death Mountain. (laughs) We'll get there. Um, A huge thing that I think one of the biggest things I would have complained about in the last game was that enemy variety got pretty stale almost immediately except for the mini bosses yeah. and once the mini bosses were no longer a surprise they have fixed that there's a ton of more new enemies i'm still running into new ones not a ton more but like the mini bosses i have yet have you run into those fucking dragons yet dude uh uh-huh. i haven't beat the three-headed dragons yeah have you beaten yeah. any of them no not yet no yeah so <laughs> those are cool i haven't have run into them final yet no, I was like really putting one to work and then it hit uh, the thing and I died and I'm like, I'm not doing this today. I ran into a Lionel the other night and I ran away. I was like, can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I ran into one for the first time in the first game, and I was like, like to dedicated to beat it. I'm excited right. to see what they drop to fuse into things. Cause that's like to go back to that. Oh, sure. The coolest thing is now not only are those 
cool enemies like fun to fight and give you cool loot but they give you like unique weapon loot which is really yeah cool. like it's a motivating factor to like remember where they are and beat them because then uh there's the minecraft monster in the sky that's like your first one in it <laughs> that's a cool mini boss guy that's pretty, that thing's cool they show up all over the place now you notice that there's different le- like levels there's one two and three yeah mm-hmm. i ran mm-hmm. into a three in the depths and it was fucking me up so i was like I'll come <laughs> I laid Dude, some of those froxes down there are tough too i dropped i jumped on a chasm as you would say right next to hyrule <laughs> castle <laughs> and it dropped yeah. me right on top of one in the save point oh i've right done that too there. so it kept fucking me up until i like yep. motion and ran away and that was fun <laughs> I had the same experience, wow. like northwest of Hyrule Castle, a little bit. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. like four hearts deep, dude. Like, like yeah. truly should not have been over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, um, yeah, no, it's cool though. It's cool like that. You're mentioning enemy diversity and like that kind of stuff, and I, I'm with you 100, percent dude. But at the same time, I was playing it, and for how vast and I mean, we're not talking like T Starfield vast, but like you know. Hyrule's big, dude. The map's fucking big. And there's always something around the horizon. Uh, there's some really cool videos out there or whatever that um, explain like how they did that in Breath of the Wild. Part of making it such a successful open world is that there's always one thing on the screen at all time where like it's it, it, it interests the player. So like you're encouraged to run towards it instead of taking the main path. You can still take the main path if you want, but you're encouraged to go a different direction. And then when you like hit the horizon, like that will like reveal more shit and there's always more shit and more things. And I feel like this game does it to like even harder. But to its credit, that's awesome. But what I think is like it's a really like nitpicky t- uh, critique. But I do feel like it's a it's an empty world, man. Like I don't think it's like empty like in like we're talking uh what's that? vampire game that just came out where people are actually upset Red that Ball. it's empty it, yeah it's not like the red fall empty but it's just like the towns and shit are dope but like i just kind of wish there was more action like witcher-esque action you know what i mean like i wish there was more npcs that like mattered out there there's a Once bunch again, this is such a weird critique dude i mean like I, I'm is wild. wheezing as it's trying to play this game <laughs> this game is so <laughs> huge know. on this outdated <laughs> software that already wasn't powerful i would say it's not and it's like my favorite. It's it's the greatest map in all of video game history as of right now. Uh, and I don't think Starfield yeah. can actually beat this even if, with its vastness because like you look at the actual map and just the way the geography is laid. And I'm a nerd for this, so like get over it. <laughs> but like like I said, like you look at a formation and you're like, I bet you something's cool over there. I right. bet you something's cool over there. So like I don't feel like it's empty uh dude it, that kind what? of stuff is cool but what i think is empty is like i just like i'm i don't like running into the dude on the donkey like and not in the middle of nowhere that like doesn't really want to do anything like i just well, i wish there was more life but like to your to your point like i don't think the switch can get any more on it <laughs> yeah know? and it depends how you define life like npcs yes but other than that like there's always some goofy little thing happening so like I like to, I've been trying to do it. I remember I went over to Tyler's house once and he was playing and then I looked at his map and he had labeled where all the different mini bosses and things that he could find is in Breath of the Wild. Yeah, I kind of do that too. So I've been doing that too. I do the skull if I can't beat the enemy yet. I do a sword if I can beat it, but it's good loot. Oh, nice. I put the little leafs when I don't want to play friend (laughs) reconnection simulator with the fucking dudes. I do. I use a leaf for that as well. I cannot. He's like, help, I can't find my friend. I'm like, God, you're heck and cute but i'm definitely not going to bring you up that cliff. those are fun sometimes and that's what's great about this game is all of a sudden you'll run into you'll be going somewhere you'll run into one of the little koroks and you're like should i do a korok thing and then you're like eh. or you throw or you throw a stamp on the map and come back when you're feeling yeah. the korok thing well, when you play the game more you have more of those zonai devices that you can like either <laughs> saved up or whatever so like yeah for example there's one where he's like my friend's up this cliff and i'm like i need the hot air balloon thing and i didn't even know that was a thing yet but i'm like i'm not gonna what there's got to be something so that like right. later on when i have more devices and a better grasp i'll return yeah dude but, i'm about 60 hours in and i've done more than you as far as like quests it sounds like and i'll i think if you look at the open spaces on your mini on your uh like pause screen or whatever i think i've only got about half of the zone devices so like i'm excited to get even deeper into the game and see what other weird ass things are going to give me yeah and like you can attach things to your arrows I haven't even explained that yet <laughs> which is like a huge fun that is a big difference. of creativity so like instead of getting fire arrows you attach like heat things some to fire arrows, fruit right <laughs> or the red choo-choo jellies or whatever yep 
Um, which is uh, cool. I, I kind of miss special dude, items. Resource like, management, man. Like there's certain things that they would might be nice to attach, but I don't want to like shoot out all my my until diamonds you run into or something. That hands monster, dude. <laughs> then you just got spam bombs. Have you killed one Ooh. of those yet? Uh, like there's multiple of them. I'm not sure. I was like, I'm not sure what you're running into. The gloom hands. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's like five of them. Yeah, you've there. It's like a mini boss. You run into them all over right. the place. But right, right. There's a few. Scary. To my understanding, I run into them. I run into them twice, and there's a set that I did beat, and then you have to you have to fight a phantom Ganon. Yes, every time, and it sucks. Mm-hmm. But they yeah. drop cool loot too. Phantom Ganon um, was easier than the hands for me because uh, they did like fuck you up yeah. with the gloom the whole time. You got to have some. Yeah. What was that that like Bomb sun flowers, sunflower dude. shit or whatever? What? You just need bomb flowers, and you just uh, that kind of helps. Five, but then, you throw five, six of them, and then you're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or you blow yourself uh, up. <laughs> you can attach your your Zoni devices to arrows, though. So, like those giant tire oh, bombs, yeah. you can shoot mm-hmm. those. That's cool. I haven't played with that too much. That's, that sounds like a nice a nice <laughs> use case. Right. So the new enemy is super dope. I love them, and I've barely even gone all over the map so i bet i'm gonna unlock some new ones for myself and then um one thing that people got really butthurt about and then we'll probably tease it back later as far as uh old zelda versus this is definitely its own era of zelda no doubt about that a big thing from the first game ever to always has been temples and then in breath of the mm-hmm. wild you had the divine beasts which right were these giant mechs essentially developed uh as different animals and they were temples kind of, but people didn't like them because they felt hollow and kind of spacious, not in a good way, just kind of like, you know, and they were pretty cool. And then you'd have a boss battle. They were always like phantom Ganon blights, weren't they? So they're just kind of different Ganon things, whatever that means. Do you get the point? Yep. So now we have temples, but do we though? Because I've done one of them. (laughs) I've done one of them and you've done two or three. Uh, two. I've done two of them. I've done uh, uh, um, the Rito me. Village one, so the Wind yeah. Temple, and I've done the yeah, Fire same. Temple over in, in uh, Goron City or whatever. I've only done volcano. the Wind one, and getting up there was super cool. I'll give them that. Mm-hmm. But also getting to the Divine Beasts I was, was really cool. to get up there. I enjoyed it, but it was like... You did it, it pretty was early. I was, uh, I was later on when I did it, so maybe that helped. Oh, maybe you, yeah, you're probably, game for and sure. like, probably more well-equipped. Uh, yeah, I definitely had enough money to buy the fucking the outfit with your broke ass. Oh, I was nice. like, better cook up some spicy peppers. You're going to need it up there. I'm like, dude, fucking get bricked, <laughs> dude. poor piece of shit. <laughs> I didn't have the full suit. It's true. Just I ended up, sell some I couldn't stuff. Beat the, and... I couldn't beat the boss up there. I couldn't beat the, the temple boss because I was too cold and I was like losing arts all the time and I didn't have like <laughs> command over the game quite yet. So I, I went and I bought parts of that suit, but uh, the snow quill suit or whatever it's called. And dude, yeah. you're right. My broke ass couldn't afford the whole thing. I didn't even get the pants till later on. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, yeah, so I was whelmed by the quote unquote temple experience. I think it looked cool. It's fine. Mine Beast looked cool. I think yeah. the new boss looked okay. The temples it, are, it's, I appreciate them, dude. But, and I think that what we're missing in those temples, they're still like, they still have like a logic little puzzle thing going on. They're all the same. And it's not like, I don't think it gives like the whole internet has been talking about this a little bit. So like spoilers, but they're like, they're essentially key quests. You got to unlock five different things in each place. Uh, so you got to find like an, a key to do the five whatevers and that will get you to the boss. Um, yeah, the, so that's not, that's not too unlike the, the temple like pattern in OG Zelda's or whatever, you know, but those I think are more intricate. I think that like, if you were to mesh, these like four whatever they call them uh areas like disaster areas or whatever where the weird activity is happening that's where all the temples are if you combine them with shrines shrines in this game i feel yeah. like a mesh of those two makes up for the dungeons that, that we're missing i think when you compare those things together like it definitely scratches that dungeon itch but it's still not a dungeon so like you don't get the personality that you get from like your skyward sword dungeons where they all felt like their own characters like i didn't leave any of these dungeons yet feeling like I felt like it was cool. I felt like I was in a cool place doing cool shit and it had cool puzzles, but it wasn't like a character of the game, which I believe is something that you've described those like, like Skyward Sword dungeons as prior yeah, to this. Like OT. Um, right. That was a big thing for me. Yeah. So you hit it on the head as far as like, if you're going to complain like, Oh, the dungeons aren't like the same. It's like, well, that's what the shrines are for. You get it all right. over the 
toys and you get a ton of them and it scratches that itch and it's like they've gone away from the formula of each dungeon has its own item and that's like the very linear back and forth you get the item you get the hook shot and then this dungeon is going to have a bunch of puzzles around the hook shot so like i understand that you can't 100 percent go back to there but i was a little bit hoping that i could have my cake and eat it too where you have this vast <laughs> game where you can go at anything and do whatever you want and take it at any direction you know take it in any order that you want which is very unlinear temple zelda like but Mm -hmm. then you still have this one space within the game where you just had this meticulously crafted thing and i think this is like i don't know i feel like the developers or nintendo kind of teased that they were more temples like they kind of it's like they listened to the feedback and then didn't do anything about it but said they did because even like the part <laughs> within the, it, like it felt hollow again like that's what i felt like inside that ship like you remember the ghost ship in skyward yep. that's fucking cool there's like stuff it is there. yeah and it, and this is just like a giant husk of a ship there's nothing right. inside except for occasional enemies or like random wire trip wires because this one corridor is pretty, it's strange it's and like it's like where free. Skyward Sword was like a beautiful puzzle box this one was like you know a puzzle box you bought for 5 bucks on the street <laughs> what is still like a puzzle a box a really, really big one that isn't actually that cool <laughs> <laughs> i'm just playing so, they're like they are good they're just like i don't know i think i think you have to pair those together but i think it's like i think like you know nintendo knew what the fuck they were doing though at the same time because like if you're because they're really going for this open world thing they really want you to get lost in this world and like yeah there's this story that you can follow and i've been diving into the story a little bit more but at the same time, there's all this other shit. And I think they want you to get it like lost in that world. And if you go too linear with these temples, you're going to lose that, I don't know, that excitement you get from finding the next shrine. So you can do a little puzzle or the like just idea that you can get on eight different tangents when you're on the, trying to do something. It becomes less, um, I don't know, you, you start hitting that line more, I think, if they if they made those temples too nice, you know? I think what they could do is make them more intensive and like more of that character in there. Whereas the special item that you'd get that helps you get through that. I mean, they kind of have that with your little buddy abilities, like the little right. bird is wind gust was definitely incorporated. Um, mm-hmm. into how you got <laughs> the around. sound effects that makes is so bad. Like it's not terrible, <laughs> but I use it all the time because it makes me dip yeah. faster in the sky. So I'm like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Uh, also, that bird boy definitely had like strong anime energy. Like, whoa, let's go! <laughs> <laughs> he did. That's not that's not abnormal of Zelda to like uh, to have like the, the NPCs have weird ass personalities. I kind of dig it. <laughs> no, so it was cool. So that's you know so that wraps up that section of uh, of the. looks like check that on the outline that i made that you're not trying to hear to. <laughs> right. Uh, smooth transition to. I was nervous when this game came out because they were returning to the same Hyrule, the same engine, the same everything. And my favorite thing as mentioned was the map and the exploration and the discovery. And I'm like, how could you possibly bring me back to the same map? I'm going to remember everything because it was my favorite place, like in any video game ever. Right. And they actually handled it pretty beautifully. I think a layers, right. They just built on top of it, but they also remixed it. So like whatever the calamitous mm-hmm. event, forgetting what they want to call the disruption, maybe that's what they call it. But they, they I think it is disruption. Yeah, yeah. Where it's it's the sky gloom. goes into the, <laughs> yeah, the gloom and then uh, the castle goes into the sky and shit. Things of the sky are falling down. Cutscenes are kind of dope, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's good. She she giving it her all. Um, so the map has been changed. That like yeah. it's progressed into the future. Because like remember when you beat Breath of the Wild, you're kind of hoping there would be like a post. Ganon like glow up of like maybe you know people are rebuilding like now it's rebuilding and there's new things being added and it's really cool and I've barely even seen the map but part of the reason I've barely seen the map is it's been layered upward and downward now return to the fight Alex tried to pick in the second minute of the podcast (laughs) sky islands are way cooler than the depths nah man really you think so oh I do not like the dark. I find it tedious. Oh, you just got to get some bright bloom seeds, bro. Dude, Throw those things all over the place. Man, Don't I'm be done. using your arrows, though. You got to be chucking those with the arm. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Somebody reads online Kotaku articles. Uh, <laughs> but yes, I agree. It's cool down there. Sometimes you like... I get that shit out before Kotaku told me. <laughs> but I saw that shit, too. <laughs> yeah. <but laughs> I stumbled down there. 
Uh, it's like one of the only sites that my work hasn't blocked yet because like even lo5gaming.com has been blocked because it's about Could, video games. Could they don't care about my education section. <laughs> uh, no, the district firewall, it does not pass. But anyway, Kotaku does, and I swear it's... Uh, how? It sounds like some <laughs> kind of nonsense. They don't know how to like... That's what? journalistic, maybe. We got to start putting out more articles. Yeah, well, that's what my scholarly stuff was for. True. There's a lot of, anyway, a lot of words on there, but... <laughs> But Shout yeah, out no, to the Low Five Education. Go check that out on lowfive.com. It's oh, cool. Please do. Hollers. But uh, anyway, um, beautifully layered. I like the depths. Sometimes, like, I jumped into one of the chasms on the plateau and, like, got into <laughs> Let me look that down. Shit. Never. That's where I ran into the, the, what's the name of the fucking Assassin Guild fucking stupid? Koga. K- Koga. Yeah, I think so. Oga, uh, and then of uh, the Giga clan. There we go. Uh, yeah. and all that. And like the discovery being on the rail carts and like, that was really fun. Like it can be really fun down there, but it's also like kind of boring and kind of just like, I guess baddies there. though in the dark. And then all of a sudden you come across them and you're like, Oh shit. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. No, that's cool. But you talk about tedious, like how about walking around a boring looking dark area forever and then not mm-hmm. finding Cool. You find so, out that they're like in the middle of a huge cave and there's walls and you can't even yeah. get over to where you want to be anyways. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes yeah. it's like discovery and it's like the most fun. Dude, Other that was the, it's for this really game. Cool. Dude, you were talking earlier though about how like to recapture that like playfulness and wonder and awe, like the the caves and the depths have given me a little bit, bit of that feeling in this game. So caves love them because there's always, wells too. always solid loot in caves. There's Yep. generally some good loot in wells where the depth is a gamble the other two aren't like i if i good find ass it, shit down in the depths though like dude yeah. have you done any of the treasure hunts there yet where you like find the the treasure yeah. map in the sky and it brings yeah. you to some loot that's yep. just kind of cool it is and the loot in this game is really cool I, there's tons of outfits i've gotten random pieces of different outfits where i'm like can't you, wait to have the full you hit set. those great fairies yet no, I don't know how to get the one open, and I'm like, this is too much for me. <laughs> oh, man, go talk to the homies to play music and then do that side yeah. quest. <laughs> I figured, I figured, and I was like, I'll get there. Um, yeah. They're start. always at the stables, yeah. not getting too much help. away. Just go do I, it. <laughs> I helped one of them, so I, like, I have okay. an idea. But I don't even have enough like outfits to want to bother yet because I'm checking out each section of the map, and I'm trying to hit every area before I unlock a new tower. I'm that weirdo. Yeah, you're wild, dude. I just spent a night where I was like, okay, it's time. And I just, uh, I spent like two hours or whatever, traver- like shooting up in the sky, traversing to the next one, scanning out, using the zoom, setting little markers, and then going to the next one. Like, dude, I, I just to, knock out the full map. I have to shrink the game. I have to. There's too much available. So I have to constrain myself to one chunk of the oh, map. I, I needed it open. But I, you know what probably kicked it off is I started doing the, uh, I started doing those quests for all the dragon tears, which is a fun quest, man. Uh, like okay. kicks you off the master sword stuff. Oh, okay. So it's it starts cool. to give you starts to give you the story of this game, which is like this game yeah. seems so oh, you like you haven't even tasted a bunch of those memories yet. And that's another thing is the memory system from Breath of the Wild was all right. I thought it was pretty cool, dude. It's way tighter in this. Like they're killing it with the cutscenes. Like the story's kind of fun, and like I haven't been like I'm, I'm digging it, man. I even like so I told you earlier, Anna's been watching me play this at night, like, <laughs> and then uh, I did like when she was at work, I did a bunch of those uh, tears things. <laughs> And so, like when she when she was like, "You want to play Zelda?" I was like, "Yeah, babe, but I got to show you all these videos." <laughs> and I, I ran them all back so she could know what was going on with the story. <laughs> That's another thing they beefed up based on. I don't want to say complaints, but a lot of people thought that the story was lacking in the first one. I liked the method of storytelling. I therefore I like it in this one as well. No, it, this is episode like twenty four, and you still be pulling around on the mic stand and shit. <laughs> yeah, uh, I got a limp dick mic. It wiggles around. It's less than, you know, superb. But anyway, moving forward. <laughs> yeah, this is our 26th pod, and you still have side quests that are 12 things deep. And I'm only letting you do three of them, because that shit's boring after a while. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> caves are dope. Wells are dope. The depths, I've had some a lot of fun. I've also I like the depths. really bored and sicky in them. Uh, the Sky Islands, though, you said that you haven't, they're kind of hard to get to, but it's kind of the fun of it is like once you get more comfortable. There is cool shit devices, going on up there. Yeah. When you get more comfortable with the zone eye devices, it's like really fun to get to the different ones. Mm-hmm. Like just off in the difference. And I'm like, like, dude, I like just wanted to see how high I could get on this. That sounded weird. I was just smoking. <laughs> smoking some so I ripped the bong. I ate some animals. 
I was in one of those giant cube things that just float there, and I attached a bunch of rockets, and it was like nice. set up to go right up into the air anyway. But I like added even more and kept going and added charges. And then there was just an island like way up there, and it had a treasure yep. map. Oh shit! Like I was nice. Just, yeah, it was cool. So like. I think it's bright. It's cool. It reminds me of Skyward Sword, which is a really good game that shot itself in the toe. Pun intended. Oh, no. <laughs> toe monster. What an abomination. Uh, Shout out to the Skyward Sword episode. Go check that shit out. <laughs> no, or hear me complain about fighting the same god-awful boss design three times. Dude, early early on in this in the Discord, when we started playing Breath of the Wild, you're like, down the depths, man. You run into it. Like, it's a throwback. Like, you know, I was like, fuck, dude. If they bring that toe monster back, I'll be so angry. I won't play this game anymore. I would have been like the first person in the history of this game to ask Nintendo for their refund if I had a fucking coma. <laughs> Honestly, though, if they drop that on me in a future game, and it's like one of those throwbacks where you kill it right away, and they're like, just kidding, I would die. Like, <laughs> uh, so oh, I really yeah. love, I love the layers, the verticality of this game. I think Nintendo outdid themselves with that. I mean, they weave them all together real good. That's been coming to play for me. And yeah. I think you now, too, on a couple of the quests you're doing. Like you can literally jump from the sky and dive into a chasm. And like I'm never gonna let that go. Uh, you can dive into a chasm or one of the openings, and it, there's no loading. You just—I mean, I guess the loading is the falling down in there. It's just kind of disguised really nicely. Yeah. But there's entire worlds where you just like a sky world that you drop into the base world, and then you could literally continue dropping into another world. And there's it's not- pretty too, dude. The animation and like all this stuff is pretty cool. I've been taking screenshots. <laughs> yeah, no, I tried to as well. Uh, it's funny, like other systems, like literally anybody else other than like Nintendo would have achievements or something. And I don't really ever hunt, right. achievements, but it's like that nice little scratch on your stupid brain when like you get something for doing something dumb. Right. Occasionally, when I do like a really long glide or like a really ridiculous thing, I'm like, Nintendo should have achievements. That would be cool. <laughs> I don't know if they can pack um, them on there. <laughs> no, they could do it this, oh, come on. Like donkey was this, like this would be a 10 but now we got to give it a 7 because like you know no, it's, no not, it's too sparse there's not enough NPCs out there and there's no Chivos <laughs> no Chivos God, I'm trying to think of like I had a complaint earlier but I think it's fine I mean this game is like a 10 I love it I've done so little in the grand scheme of things and I've played a lot and it's gonna be they did it again, man. They did it they again. Did. It'll be it'll be fun to to circle back and and talk about the, uh, more of the story. But dude, the game the game is great. Uh, I'm really loving it, and it and I can tell that it's going to be one that I'll play for a long time. Yeah. Um, so I mean, it's and it's funny. Like we spent half of this episode talking about Breath of the Wild and direct comparisons, and that's the gift and the curse of the sequels. It built up on it so much, and it's such a reflection of an enhancement of, or like a redirectioning of that game. Like they live together so much, even for a sequel. I find that kind of fascinating, but it's, it's super bitch. And, and I wonder, Oh yeah, some things I wonder that the future of the game is definitely open world. It's definitely this, whatever their new system is, it's Nintendo and it's Zelda. So they're not going to just release this game again. Like it's going to be something wild and crazy that we can't yet conceive which sounds like hyperbole but like zelda blew people's minds how many times now with their different games and format shifts so they they kind of like set the tent like the tempo for other games multiple sure. times, decades like they've done it i wouldn't say they hit they've done it at least three four times where they totally like set the table for everybody else i'd say that between like majora's mask and breath of the wild you just had like an intense refinement i guess maybe wind waker is where you would put it an intense like refinement of their formula and then they just totally broke from that but sure. I bring this all up to say is that i love this game so much the noises the different characters there's so many callbacks throughout like decades of zelda history it is I cool do kind of miss 3d zelda that wasn't like this is its own category you know what I, I mean? hundred percent, dude. And Nintendo is more or less, there's some interview or whatever where they more or less said that exactly what you were talking about. They're going to continue this format and they're going to continue like the master hand shit. And I think that's great. I love it. I love this game, but yeah. I am also nostalgic and I yearn for the OG format. And honestly, 
I started just before Breath of the Wild. I started uh, because I've never actually beat uh, Link to the Past. Like I've only played the first parts of it, and I started playing, and it was like, dude, it it tasted so good. (laughs) (laughs) Even see what's crazy though is like, okay, so 2D Zelda. Once again, we're talking about the revolutions and iterations of right. So 2D Zelda is that formula, but it's its own subgenre, right? Right. So like a lot of people emulate. Oh man, what's the name of that? There's a game that in the Summer Games Face Fest was announced where it's literally like Mario Maker, but Zelda, 2D Zelda. It looks so sick, dude. Like you can share and upload different dungeons that you make. Have you seen oh. this? Is I it the one that I, I don't know. I don't know if, I, if I've noticed that one or not. Zelda Maker game. Yeah. Thanks, Kotaku. I knew you had my back. Well, that Dungeons of Hinterberg, Quest I didn't Master. notice that. Is that the one? What's up? Oh, dude, I'm getting there. So Quest Master is a pixel art RPG spin on Nintendo's popular Super Mario Maker franchise. So that's, you know, shouts out Kotaku. Oh. Shouts out Zach Zweizen. My bad. I tried. His shit's dope. <laughs> I read them all the time. But anyway, we've talked a lot about people going back to retro game styles and doing like the glow up with modern technology. And, yeah. Like, all their I recently games. played Death's Door. That's a nice example. Yeah great example right and i love those games and like metroidvanias have had a huge blow up in the indie space and it's mm-hmm. like it's all back but it's just like refined it's just it's a it's a refinement of a different era and it's more accessible and it's cheaper to make and it's still like it's so great that's gonna come for the 3d zelda games and i'm super here for it and what's the game that you just mentioned from the showcase today dungeons of hinterberg i want to say when I was watching that, I was like, this gives me a little bit more of that feel. Like, it's just a tease of it. So, who knows if it's right. that. Like, if people, Dude, it like, had like a comic Nintendo book and art it. style, too. It had, like, the art style for that game looked dope. I wish Nintendo would do it. Like, if they wanted to make, like, I don't know why they can't. They're just too cool. But, like, if they could make their new style of Zelda and then just have, like, a different spinoff where it's just Dude. set in the old they just way. need to do the metroid they need to do the metroid formula they need to do 3d zelda continue doing their breath of the wild shit but then like also make some like smaller games for us come on let's get let's get them going you got that money really cool. <laughs> if you gave me like a 20 to 30 hour zelda where it was just like super sick meticulous yeah dude like crazy. give me some links awakening like just make yeah. just go like use use the fucking same yeah. system the same like whatever you call it that they use for the remake of links awakening but make me a new a new game yeah, I mean they're they're not a huge fan of spreading themselves thin, which is respectable. But so indie developers, I think that a, a space that will open up. I'm not actually giving business advice to Zelda here. I'm just wishing that they did this shit. <laughs> uh, make Zelda Japanese. Yeah, and give me real. 3D temple based Zelda games. No, like an indie space. I think that would be. I would look for games like that personally, and I'm sure there's some out there. I can name you a few. If you know, in the same way that developers have gone back to old styles and made though like new, fresh ideas on top of those, like somebody could make a sick 1990s to early 2000s Zelda like, right? Like that yeah. 1990 to 2010, 11, whenever Skyward Sword came out. I think it's 12. Um, give me that era of Zelda in different ideas, and that'd be a sick thing. So, uh, any other thoughts other than that really long rant? My bad. Nah, man. <laughs> Breath, Breath of the Wild is tight. Fucking Tears of the Kingdom tighter? I don't know. Question mark. It's a great like continuation of Breath of the Wild. It's like a new thing, but it's like picks up right where Breath of the Wild left off, and I love it. It's a sequel. They fucking nailed that shit. Yeah. And I agree with you, bro. I want some old formula, old format too. I want it all. I want my cake, and I want to eat it too. <laughs> and I, I want to do it all in Hyrule. <laughs> PlayStation and Xbox have like these super high powered machines and they're pissing on each other, spending all this money all over the place. And then they're just off doing their own thing and on this like way lesser device drop like the tightest game and they're just like, Yeah, no no bugs. <laughs> like Dude, that's a that's this it, game is clean like that too. I was, they took yeah. a year to, a year, extra year to do that. And uh thank you. Let's take a little break, come back side quest, dude. Hear from our unsanctioned sponsor. We've done it for the ladies. Now we're doing it for the fellas. Yo, what up, Daz? This episode is unofficially brought to you in part, but also officially brought to you in part by Luke, who is a dad, me, who's going to be a dad, and fucking all the dads out there listening. Holler at the dads, bro. He wasn't ready on Mother's Day, but he's ready now. So there's your... I wasn't. (laughs) It's cute. cute. Yeah. So, you you know, you get a... 
you get a training day of Father's Day, but you don't get like the full celebration, but you get to think about, oh, next year, man. Next uh, no. year, man. And, that's, <laughs> and, and for me, it is this year. It's my first one. And, you know, Mother's Day was fun. And uh, you've been killing it, bro. Good job being a dad. Thank you. <laughs> I... I have a Father's Day tradition going on here where uh, I cook dad ribs. Mom went on retreat nice. like five to seven years ago. And <laughs> she never came out. home. That's she, it. Um, you know, she, was gone she comes home from every retreat. And I was like, I got you, dad. Because, you know, he can cook kind of. But like <laughs> dad, where for some reason, he can cook breakfast, but no other meal. I don't know why that's a Ah, dad. Franks and beans. Okay. He had that down too. <laughs> Right. As a part of our dad shout out, just a general reminder to please uh, not touch the thermostat and make sure you put the dishes in the dishwasher and don't hang up your towel in the way where it's not spread out because the towel can't dry if it's not spread out on the rack. So, this is true. As any father would let you know, you can't you can't be doing that. So mm, it's true. Any other ridiculous dad things that you remember from your childhood that you can think of where you do them as an adult now and you're like, God damn it, he won. You just yeah, I'll tell you what. If my little boy ever gets caught playing a really cool Star Wars game where you like shoot things as a bounty hunter, I'm going to pop that disc out and crush it to make a point. <laughs> well, maybe if you see him playing around with how realistic the game is really going to be when you take your flamethrower and hit the random crowd of innocents, you might have a little bit of worry, but maybe don't crush it with a little hammer like a little drama queen. Tell him just playing that's not going to happen, dude. In, in 12 years, we're not even going to have any physical media. Yeah, how will I destroy you, it? You can't see it, folks, but a tear just dropped from my eye. Yeah. Um, no, dude, I have to say this, is that uh, whenever the wife doesn't fill the ice cubes after emptying the ice cube tray, I turn into this <laughs> and I'm like, God damn it, am I the only one in here who fills ice cube trays? Like, I can't silently do it. Everybody has to know that I refilled the ice cube tray because i have become a father and therefore i'm really weird about the thermostat this yeah. is these are real things that are in my life these days and i'm really <laughs> weird about refilling the water brita and the ice cube tray and i will i will nag anybody and everybody if they don't be keeping up with that mm, i do all that shit too though <laughs> it's part of your dad training there we go it's true here's <laughs> all the dads yo here's all the dads out there playing fucking zelda get it dad <laughs> Love you, Dad. I know you ain't listening, but we still love you. <laughs> it's a, a radio program, but they never showed up. Oh, uh, man, I've mostly been playing Zelda, to be honest. Uh, yeah. A little bit. I just had to throw them down just to make to remind myself that I do other things than play Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, play the show. Uh, Game Pass. Shout yeah. out to Game Pass, man. We've been always on Game Pass, like talking about the best deal in gaming and shit. But like Game Pass, the cloud, man, the gaming cloud that it does. I used to hate on cloud gaming. But I'm able to play Game Pass on my Steam Deck, on my Xbox. Technically, I can play on my phone. It's great. It's so cool. And I can, and because it, but like, granted, I have a pretty good internet connection that helps. If I didn't, it would be whack. I would not be happy about it. But like, I love being able to dabble, man. Like, as you have that huge library, being able to not have to download anything and just dabble in a little game, like, get a little taste of something, spend tight. No game in particular that I want to shout out for that, but Game Pass in general. But the other game that it's only gotten, honestly, like an hour, two hours of game time outside of Tears of the Kingdom is the Capcom Arcade Stadium second bundle. And I've been waiting for this thing to drop forever because I refuse to pay the Nintendo tasks on this shit because it's super cheap on Xbox and PC and everything. But Nintendo makes you pay like a full on 40 bucks or some bullshit. But it dropped 50% and I got it. And it's a great fucking bundle, man. There's some good ass games in there. It got Gunsmoke. 1943 is dope. It's got this Capcom Sports Club game that's kind of like NBA Jam, but it's like more simple and quicker. And it's got more over the top arcade shit going on. You can also play soccer and like maybe baseball. It's got three different games. I don't remember. I just played the basketball. But I love me playing with my arcade stick, dude. And I love me playing some old arcade games. I got to do it, man. We're, we're like balls deep in Tears of the Kingdom. Sometimes I need to unplug from Hyrule and do something arcadey. Yeah. No, that's – I play MLB The Show, and it's like when I'm like get stressed out of what direction I should head in or why I got lost in some caves for an hour and a half or why the shrine has taken me forever and the solution was actually way easier than it needed to be, it's just nice to go up and just, just hit some balls, see ball, hit ball. Yeah, dog. Like, so that's actually been nice. So I feel that the arcade vibe would be pretty tight. 
And then I got my two shows. I finished up Succession and I finished up Ted Lasso. And now I don't know what to do with my life. I'm without a show that like they put bows on each of those. We're talking final seasons. I mean, I know what to do with my life, but I had to say goodbye to Succession and Ted Lasso. It's big shit. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Uh, Both are great, by the way. Succession, like, I don't know how familiar you are with King Lear, uh, but, you know, it kind of loosely follows that story. And it's been it's great. Right. You watch Succession. I have not seen a single episode, but I, a lot of podcasts I listen to talk about it. And for some yeah. reason, I find it interesting to hear other people talk about it. Dude, you'll the be in for a treat when you start it. it. Yeah. Right on. It's fair. It's good. And it's nice. And it's nice that it's done. I like, I like fucking series that come to a close. And Ted Lasso also came to a close. And uh, a lot of hate on the internet for that, that final season. But I dug it, dude. I thought it was tight. I, I stand by my guns. I think it was, uh, I think the, you know, the final episode like did a good job. And I'm I'm happy. I'm happy with the end of Ted Lasso. Bill Stallman agrees with you. Nice. Uh, yeah, nice. see? Uh, <laughs> Bill Dad agrees with you. <laughs> so I don't know. I guess, you know, I think I think sometimes it's just more interesting to write a thought piece on how you're disappointed with a show or a critique of the show than it is to be like, hey, that was a good time. So like I mm-hmm. think and that's, that's what that show's always been about. So I'm like, yeah, get out of here with that shit. To read those things and I, I'd imagine it's more compelling to write that than just like it was fine or it was okay so like i haven't seen it i you know i I have my critiques i have my critiques of certain character like arcs and like how things panned out but at the same time like i think it was good man i think it was fun uh and i enjoyed it i enjoyed where everything came you know it came full circle on a lot of stuff and i think that they did i think it was a it was a it was a good show (laughs) (laughs) yeah i haven't haven't gotten into either well i've so when i get apple again there's two Descriptions, dog, and I don't care to pay Apple in their stupid economy. So, like, fuck Apple. Um, but I'll get there eventually, and then I'll watch Ted Lasso. But what are you gonna do? And then uh, Secession just never ran into it yet. It'll be a nice treat when you do it. Yeah, it's good. The acting is good. The writing is really good. Um, it's dope, dope series. What you got, man? What you been side questing? So that might be the show. It's just I, I really honestly plan on just steady plotting through seasons, and like hopefully just until Madden or 2K and just get my sports fix. But there's, you know, as I'll tell you every month, that's just not very interesting to pot about. So Mario movie finally saw it. Yeah, boy. (laughs) You'll remember Alex telling me he saw the Mario movie and me being like tight. And then there was a pregnant pause and I'm like, I don't got anything to say about it. I haven't seen that shit. (laughs) I've seen that shit. I spent way too much money on it because I wanted to watch it. You own the digital rights now. Yeah, but like, you know, as much as that's annoying, I got it on Amazon, which I imagine is an entity for a while, and the kids are going to watch this movie because it's a lot of fun. Critiques of this mm-hmm. movie are hilarious because the fuck did you expect? Yeah, like, I don't I have any have critiques my, of this movie. <laughs> like, yeah, no, like, it's funny. If you, first of all, like, the whole, like, Mario needs to be Italian thing is hilarious because <laughs> was it like a British guy and an Hispanic guy, like the original Mario and Luigi for the movie they uh, made in the 90s. And oh then, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's considered canon, but <laughs> Chris Chris Pratt is just very fine at his job. I get really worked up about Chris Pratt's performance. It's right. a, a waste of your time, in my opinion. I thought everybody else was a lot of fun, and I thought uh, he, Jack Black really killed it, man. Yeah, uh, what's his name from Always Sunny? As Luigi was a lot of fun Charlie too. Day. Yeah, Charlie Day, Seth Rogen did like people were hating on Donkey Kong too for being Seth Rogen's voice, but yes. it works, man. I was like, whatever, this is dope. Yeah, and then uh, Anna Joy Taylor was fine. Uh, it's uh-huh. good. Yeah. So I liked it. It's fun. There's tons of like little things. I mean, I I look forward to watching. Visually, it again. it's amazing, bro. Like, yeah. it's yeah. wild how like cool it looks. <laughs> and they had so many throwbacks. Like, dude, yeah. like our call out, like callbacks to to like Mario games and stuff. Like, I've never seen it. I mean. There's that scene where they do the platforming sequence, and I was like, "That's amazing! That like that's like a fucking it's a platform video game right there." Yeah, and, and they start works in the movie. From the beginning, they did like a two a two D scene where they're like running around, and I was just like, "That's really cool!" And it was yep. just just a lot of fun. It's a short, tight little movie. The plot is about a Mario movie plot. Like I probably could have told you how it was going to shake out. And that's very, I wanted to, I wanted to feel something, Luke. I wanted wanted to go to the Mario movie and feel something. uh, Impeach more of like a badass, which is cool. Yeah. I think that is cool too. 
Uh, and I'm telling you, Jack Black as Bowser is dope, dude. I love it. <laughs> oh, tremendous amount of fun. Uh, and he enjoyed himself the whole time as mm-hmm. far as the tour and everything. So they'll make more of them. That's already been more or less discussed, and that's awesome. And I'll watch them all, and I'll think they're all really cool. And sometimes people like – they can't all be the Godfather, man. Like sometimes I just like <laughs> got to be the Godfather three. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I just want like a good time, and that's exactly what it delivered on. Is it's a good time, and it's it's a good time movie for sure. It's beautiful. And what else did you want? What else did you want from the Mario movie? Get out of here, haters! <laughs> it's, it's a game based on its mechanics more than a story. Always right. So right. like, it's like Zelda as we'll transition to. That's definitely. <laughs> next movie and uh highly rumored yeah i mean it's more or less a given but i kind of wish they would give it to like a smaller studio and not do the whole make it for everybody route but like they want to make another billion dollars so i get it what the fuck do i know uh but when they make the movie they should make zelda japanese oh, that'd be dope <laughs> but, <laughs> um i expect it to laugh not just Let's make read. it Nah, this would make a cowboy bebop style. I'd be so I'd be so excited. <laughs> kind of what I was getting at. The the studio I would peg is the one based out of Austin that handled, which wouldn't make an anime, but uh, the one that handled Castlevania, dude. Oh yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. Make it like a little darker. Mm. It doesn't need to be like gross, but like if they just did like a a very highly done series where like you just make the action sequence. That's what's cool about Castlevania, though, is they made the action sequence and so badass, you know? Yeah. So like. I've seen some articles and they'll use like the remake for Link's Awakening when they talk about the game because Illumination is it? They do minions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Mario movie and it's very cute, right? Right. Yeah, it won't be dark. <laughs> well, I won't say. I mean, I guess even, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> the problem is, is like Mario is a ubiquitous mascot, right? That's the point. Yeah. Of Mario. Like Mario plays golf. Mario plays tennis. Mario races. Mario it does this. Put X, right? Mario was meant to be a mascot, literally to challenge Mickey Mouse. So, like, Mario is meant to be the most non-offensive, most recognizable thing ever. So, like, Mario doesn't have hot takes. Mario doesn't go through hard times. Mario's goofy. Wahoo! Like, <laughs> perfect for that style of animation and that type of animation house. But... I think Nintendo would be remiss to try to make a one size fits all Zelda movie, but it's probably still going to be cool as much as. Yeah, no, I feel you. I asked in the discord, I was like, what do you all think about like Link having a voice? Cause I think that's one of the reasons why he lands as such a cool protagonist for me because I'm able to embody Link, you know, because Link's voice might, he's like this mute character or whatever, who you can see like talking, you know, that because people respond to you and like, but you have to like, you always assume or presume his dialogue. There's never even written dialogue for Link. So like get having like Chris Pratt being a personality for Mario, it's like whatever, but like adding anyone to Link is going to be trouble, man, because like, because Link's supposed to be you. Yeah. I mean, in some of the games, if not the original one, you would literally name Link. Like, right. Right. Yeah. Right. Even in, him. even an OT, you can still rename Link. I remember it from first, but, uh, so, you know, it would be trickier to do. Oh, but, you mean this, you've been able to do it since the first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't like my, my point is like you can't rename Link in Breath of the Wild. Correct. Like they've gone away from it in the more future iterations, which is cool. I'm very OK with that. Right. Uh, I always call but, him Link anyways. <laughs> yeah, right. Your callback, uh, callback to earlier when you said it's the same story every time. Like I generally know the loop that it'll be right. He's the hero right. of time, courage, blah, 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 bravery. I might bring different spice for sure. Yeah, and it'll be cool in the different references to the games, but like if it's slapstick or if it's goofy, like mm. it's just strange. So, I mean, that, that shit happens though. That, I mean, like, Zelda's got this goofy ass humor to it, like the Korok dance and shit like that, where they do get the maracas and shit. Like, you know, it's Zelda gets silly. <laughs> Zelda gets super silly, but like also, I don't know. I think that my dream has always been that they give it to like a cool gritty studio and they, and I've seen other people mention this on Reddit. So it's like one of those things where you think you came up with that dope idea, and <laughs> not, but like more of like an anthology take where each season or each cluster of episodes is like a different game and art style. Oh, that'd be cool. That'd be like super sick, but like, you know, they'll do their thing. They'll make another billion dollars and fuck. I'll pay $30 to own it. So they got me. They know they do. <laughs> and with that, 
Yeah. Good job, Nintendo. You got us again. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. We'll see you next month as we talk more about uh, attaching pots to spears. Yes, sir. Well, I think we're also going to play six golden coins, dude. So if you got that fucking game, you got the NSO, get on some six golden coins with us. Hit that Discord, play along. It's a weird Mario game that Alex, for some reason, had as a child. So he's going to make me play. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's kind of yes, sir. Game. We'll see. <laughs> I'm just going to play that Castlevania style game that we played earlier. And uh, you'll have enough time, man. Six golden coins doesn't take too long to beat. That's true. Peace, everybody. Peace. Peace. Thank you.